Alrighty, well, good evening, everybody. Well, to start things off, um, my TV is on the fritz right now, so um, it uh, it blacks out from time to time. So if you do see the gameplay go black all of a sudden, I'll have to uh, turn off my TV and turn it back on. So just to give people a kind of, kind of a heads up. But anyway, um, I thought I would go ahead and uh, do another another tutorial video on this game here that I've been playing quite a bit, The Perfect Tower 2. Um, I played the original version, uh, which back in, I think it's like the Flash version, like back in like the 2010s somewhere. And then um, the the reason that I'm, uh, I'm making a second one is um, one, this is the one that I want to use for like, uh, for when I do my Final Fantasy 14 blog post. Um, I want to, instead of just, uh, typing down a bunch of stuff it would be a lot easier for me to just post this video up instead exp um, explaining what I want to explain that way so I'm not having to type down any walls or walls of text so or or either that or trying to cram down everything I want to say down to, into like one paragraph and I end up not saying the things that I want to say so then I figured it's something like this it's going to be easier to show than tell and then, um, secondly, I'm hoping to not make the same mistake here. I did do a proper sound test, but, um, I listened to my last video. The music got was way too loud. So, yeah, I'm, but like I said, I'm, a. Uh, I switched to a different album. This is going to be Frere, uh, the Crepuscular Glare of Wisdom. It's basically library music. Um, it's quieter. It shouldn't uh, it shouldn't dominate the whole video. At least that's what I'm what I'm hoping. Uh, once again, um, I did do a sound test on it, so it shouldn't be uh, it shouldn't be that loud. So, but once again, um, just gonna do a tutorial on this. Um, I and that's the other that's the other reason too. I've been playing this game for a while. Um, while I haven't completely beaten it, but I have played it enough to know how the buildings work and stuff, so I'm hoping this is going to be it's going to be a more comprehensive tutorial than my last one. The last one, I had pretty much just started playing the game, so but anyway, um, let's go ahead and get her started. And then I'll, I'll come back to this one. I don't know why I have a cloud save in here. Okay. So yeah. We'll go and we'll go and start all over from scratch. Yeah, we'll go ahead and skip the tutorials. I'll show you all that. So yeah. Here's the meat and potatoes of it. You're a tower. You just gotta shoot stuff. And then every time you kill an enemy You'll gain XP, and you'll gain town resources. XP you'll spend here, and uh, these are temporary buffs. And, oops, I died. And then, uh, one thing this game does have that I don't think the previous one had was a uh, auto restart. In the previous, um, in the previous Perfect Tower, this was a buff that you had to purchase with upgrade points. Meaning, up until this point, you had to sit there and babysit the whole thing. So, but nope, it's a, uh, this feature is baked in, auto restart. I set it to 10 seconds, it just, it gives me a longer period of time to respond to stuff, click stuff, that kind of thing. But, we'll just go ahead and restart that, and then, and then um, you keep any uh, town resources the white cube up here, you keep those. XP, it resets to zero after every run. And again, you just go over here, you'll spend your XP here. And once again, these are temporary buffs. They only last until the uh, current battle. And then to make this, so I'm not having to click so damn much, just gonna go down here and set it from X1 to X5. But 
what you're seeing here, this is the basics of it. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, jack the speed up, uh, double speed, just so this goes quicker. Okay, so I think we'll go back to town. And as you can see here, all the uh, you again you get XP from killing enemies, and uh, every time you level up, you as is obvious, you gain a town level, and you also gain a skill point. But and then you'll, you'll go over here. Like, this is the only building I have right now, construction firm. But this is where you spend your skill points. So, various ones. Like, I'd, I'd normally take this one right off the bat. But, like I said, I'm gonna, I gotta save it. And then, in these buildings here... You'll, uh, you'll convert your uh, town your your town resources here into uh, in this case here construction firm resources but one cool thing that this game has is quick convert and I'm hoping you guys can real uh, can see the uh, little tooltips that pop up but you just hold down right click and a little little radial thing here Then you got 11. And just gotta wait a minute. Because the workshop, this is uh, one, of the, uh, one of the fundamental buildings that you'll have in this game. Because in the workshop, oh thanks, I can show them. And uh, this is where you'll be. But I have zero right now, but this is where you'll be uh, spending a whole bunch of whole bunch of your points. And uh, these here, these are permanent; they're not temporary. So, so since we're out of points, and uh, let me go over here. And now that the workshop's open. Blueprint size three to four. Yeah, so I think what this means here, for every forty nine um, uh, town resource points I spend in here, it converts to one one workshop point. Randomly unlock new modules. Um, but yeah, for every uh, for every run you do, each place you uh, do your runs in has a random chance of uh, giving you a new module. Um, a module, it's it's kind of what you saw: basic attack, you know, regeneration, that kind of thing, hit points. That's what that's a module. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with recycling. So, that's that's about all I can do right now. Oh, and they have they also have town customization where you can customize your towers. I don't I don't mess with this. I just like my tower the way it is, but I reckon yeah, you can't really point click anything. Like I say, it's, it's just purely cosmetic, so I'm usually uh, too busy wanting to do other stuff. But yeah, well, back in we go. Oh, and also, um, each enemy that you come across, they're going to be of a, of a particular element. You got basic neutral, light, electricity, fire, and um, each one, each element has a weakness of its um, opposite element. I would basically have to go on the wiki and pull up the chart. Um, some of it, 
Some of it's pretty obvious. Fire is weak against water. But, um, uh, I don't think the opposite is true. Like, water isn't weak against fire, or they don't, they don't cancel each other out. Like, water stronger against fire, that kind of thing. But, I, like I said, I'd have to, um, I'd have to pull up the, uh, the wiki chart for this. Like, uh, earth is, uh, counter, earth and air counter each other, that kind of thing. It's gonna matter. It's gonna matter a lot more later on in the game, when uh, you'll start unlocking more modules. That'll give you like an air-based attack, an earth-based attack, etc. But once again, sorry to sound like a broken record, but killing enemies gets you all uh, white points. Let's restart it. Yep, in the early part of this game, this is what you're going to be doing a lot of. Should have picked regeneration. Whoops. Ugh. That's a lot of resources, so let's go back and spend them. And I'm level two. Level two and another skill point. Definitely want that one. So let's go to the workshop. Uh -huh. 15 points. And then you can also go over here towards the right. I'm hoping you're able to see this. Yeah, you should be able to. And yeah, it looks like... um. I saw for a brief moment. It looks like you are able to uh, see my tooltips. So let's go back here. So yeah, I typically I just uh, set it on 100%. So that's only going to give me five points. So. Try 10%. So let's just, uh. Oh, yeah. Attack speed's one of those. You can only, uh. There's a limited amount of, uh, stack. There's a limited amount of stacks you can give attack speed, but it, it's also gonna be the most expensive. So we'll go. Can't see why I wouldn't be able to. Okay, so spend some points and then let's go back here and do another run. Also, over here in the lower left corner, you can see the stats of your enemies. Like, they're doing 2.9 damage, and they have 11.6 health. But typically, when I'm upgrading my tower, I usually just build it evenly. Unless I have a good reason not to. Oh, 
And we got a boss. Luckily, I one-shot him. And um, these guys here, you notice they're green? These are nature enemies. It's, it's like I said earlier. Um, eventually, you're gonna want to do um. Uh, you're gonna, you're gonna want to do uh, various elemental attacks that can counteract them. Uh, nature. I think they're either countered by either earth or air. I can't remember. Or electricity. I think that was it. Hey, three new modules. Awesome, awesome. So, so we got basic bouncing. Frickin' mandatory for every tower. Fire attack. Fire resist. And you're gonna need basic bouncing. These are gonna... It's basically a... It's basically a chain attack. Ooh, 35. And it's pretty much all gonna go into here. And then fire attack. Um, I won't mess with this right now. Because, um, the enemies that I'm facing, I don't think any of them are water, are water-based. So. Right, so, got basic bouncing, so let's plug that sucker in. Then we go back, oh, and we got another skill point. Spandy points, but uh, I'll eventually want to unlock uh, headquarters as well. Um, advanced. Yeah, I'll go with this one. So, so back we go. But yeah, like I said, I pro I won't be using a fire attack at all. Because I don't, I don't have any uh, water-based enemies in this area here, and then, and then when it comes to elements in this game, when um, if I was to use a fire attack against a fire-based enemy, it's only gonna deal. I think it's only gonna deal half damage. But um, if I use a fire attack against a water enemy, it's only gonna deal a quarter quarter uh, amount of damage so but like I said they do um I think elements are done kind of wonky in this game like like I said a few minutes ago um not elements don't always cancel each other out like uh, water water destroys fire but fire won't destroy water um But I like I said I don't have I don't have trouble. But yeah, it's it's something I have to actually look at the spreadsheet chart for. Yes. And his elemental strengths and weaknesses are really wonky in this game. So yeah, ten percent chance max two bounces. the boss. Hopefully I one-shot him. Nope. Spent too much on uh, bouncing. But yeah. Combat XP, town XP, town resources. So, I want to... 
I still don't have enough. But yeah, I want to get enough to where... I want to buy the headquarters. But I'm going to have to go back here in a workshop instead. But yeah, in the early part of this game, this is what you're going to be doing a lot of. That's high positive. Okay. So one thing I um I often forget to do this, but one thing you can do when you're when you're doing these runs, look at your um how much damage your enemy is doing, and compare it to your uh, regeneration here. Like here it's 5.1, they're doing 2.2. .2, so so that means you know maybe maybe I don't need I don't need as much defense and just Go to attack speed, you know, something like that. So, so I don't need the hit points right now because I have more regen than they're um, damaging. And I'm dealing 32 damage, they only have 21 health, so I don't need the attack damage right now. Unless it's core, unless of course it's the boss. There we go. We got him. We got him. Yeah, I better take the hit points. They're dealing forty-four. Or oh, I misread that. Only twelve. Yeah, green. Green is nature. Oh, wow, they are weak against fire, okay? And uh, I just now noticed that. I also forgot to mention, too, or not like it really mattered, but this game got an update recently. So, that tooltip you saw when I clicked on that enemy, I had just now noticed that it shows you strengths and weaknesses. That'll help a ton. So, now that I think about it, Let's go back here. for the boss. There we go. Okay, yeah. So, looks like according to nature... So yeah, it looks like they are weak against fire. So, minus 100. 
So yeah, I guess they take double damage from fire if I'm reading that right. And then yeah, it's it, I'm again I'm really hoping you can see the tooltip here. But yeah, they take uh they take half damage. They take half damage from nature. It's their element. And they uh they only take uh twenty five percent they only take twenty five percent damage from Earth. Yeah, I don't I think this is new. I don't recall seeing this. It used to be, you click on an enemy and that's all you got, right there. So yeah, very helpful. Hey, there was one. Bounced. Okay. Leveled up. Okay, so let's build a headquarters. And then we have Earth Attack. Yes, all I want to add some attack speed in there. So let's plug that one in. Guess it uh, deals more damage against nature enemies. Um, yeah. And we got it. So, we now have a headquarters. Oh, I can do that. And uh, here, um, for, those that, for those that have played other idle games, the concept of prestiging, this is where you do it. In the headquarters. Like, in order to go to Pier 2, which... They don't show you what the rewards are. You have to have uh, 10 modules, and they have to be completely maxed out. So, and then you also have to unlock uh, three other regions when you do that. Then um, all of your um, yeah, maximum tier. Yep, unlocks more buildings. And then, um, another big concept here, workers, they're gonna, um, they're really gonna make your life a lot easier in this game. So. Um, contracts, um, this is also part of today's update. Um, the, um, they had a really wonky way of doing this. You actually had to pay, um, you actually had to pay resources in order to unlock these. So, so I guess what this means here. Pull stone foundation out. Go back here. Ta-da! So, I don't know what I'm... I still have to... I have to get some more resources for this, but... Yeah, see, you get a... You get a 1.50% more resource drops. Um, technology... Another big time uh, buff here. Auto skip. Um... Again, I'm really hoping you guys can see the tool tips on this. Yeah, because there's like a there's like a five or six second cooldown between waves. But once you get auto skip going, they start coming in droves. Wave streaming. 
Same thing. And, but, um, i tell you what. So, I'm gonna go back to the main menu here. And then I'm gonna show you, um, I'm gonna show you what I have right now. This is my main one. So, down level 155. Um, so, so again, once you uh, meet all the requirements here, then you can, uh, you can, uh, you can tear up. And then, prestiging in this game, unlike some other games, what that, what that means here is, uh, as you can see here, I have a very well-established workshop. What what this means is, uh, when you prestige, all these um, all of their levels are reset by default to one, meaning you have to start everything all over again. But you're also given various uh, perks and points and all that good stuff. Don't know limit. I I'm guessing limit less. So. Like I got a. This is gonna be extremely tough here. Reach wave. Oh, and for those that don't know how to read this, read this the one e eleven. That scientific notation. I, it's um, it's basically one. With eleven zeros after it. One e eleven. So yeah, it's one. And then 11 zeros after it. Pretty high number. Yeah, once again, uh, headquarters, for the most part, this is where you do, um, this is where you do your prestiging. This is where you do your tearing up. And then the power plant. Yeah, I'm going to do it. And then power plant, this is the, this is the building. Where um, this is where you get your uh, your uh, your buffs, buffs a bunch of your buildings. Uh, but in order to do that, they require power. In order to maintain, and you do that. Like, I can't re I can't remember the name of the idle game. I played it many years ago, uh, on the Congregate website, uh, back when Flash was still available. Like reactor idle or something like that, but that's how um, that's what this mini game here is based on. Here, you got to supply power to the power plant here, which again in turn it um, it gives your buildings um, a time boost. And the various uh, buildings you can use. And then way later on in the game, you'll be able to do uh, Dyson Spheres. You can launch them. Um, launch a bunch of drones. Um, upgrade them here and all that. And you can form Dyson rings, which eventually get enough of them. You can... Oh! Did not know that. I just clicked that on a whim, so you learn something new every day. But what I was really wanting to look at was down here, tower attack range. Okay, that's interesting. Like I said, I totally did not know about this. Um, Cause when I'm looking at the symbols, I'm thinking it may, you need to make uh, 10 Dyson spheres like these, or Dyson rings I should say. But, uh, good to know.
but that's the power plant. Uh, the mine, very important area here. But, uh, you got the drill over here. Something wrong. But yeah, you just go over here, drill power, tank volume, fuel usage, you just. So let me, uh, and then here's your work, here's the workers that I was talking about. They can uh, help automate various stuff. Got the worker working on that. There we go. We got it. So. But yeah, anyway, what you would do is you would go in here. You just click a spot and percentages are on the right. But what you're really after over here are these, um, these here. They're shards. And when you click that whole layer, you just. But again, I got um. I got a bunch of workers doing this. Yeah. So they've already cleaned this up. Again, you you'll need these shards because they get used here in the factory, and this is pretty much where I spend the most amount of time. Um, and uh, this album is almost over, so which means I kind of went a little over long in this video. But yeah, um, if you think Final Fantasy XIV's crafting system. And, um, and Minecraft. Like, I could probably show you an example here. Like, if I want to, I want to make a basic chip. I would, uh, I would need these items. You can, uh, or you can do auto fill. So, since, uh, I need one more circuit wire. Um, I think you need it. You need a cable. Yep. Make one. Make one more. Ta-da! Made a basic chip. But recipes can be as simple as this. Or they, or they could be as uh, complex as this, where you need a whole metric ton of resources. So yeah, you gotta have all this just to make one single nano chip. And then the big goal with these um, in the factory is you're, is you're trying to make producers. As it says here, it generates resources over time when put in the producer grid. So as you can see here, I got some, got a yellow one, got some blue. And this is, um, this is what it's all making me. And uh, it's gonna reach a point where, where you don't need to do tower runs as much. Once you start getting these producers up and running, making all the, making all the things that you need, you won't have to do the uh, tower runs as much to get your resources. And again, these are all the resources that I got from mining. Yeah, so, in two hours, 47 minutes, these are all the resources that I'm gonna get. So, but like I said, if you played off Final Fantasy 14, their crafting system, 
Minecraft, their crafting system, that's the factory. So. Probably my favorite building right here in the whole game. This is fun as hell. If you're into that kind of thing, I guess while I'm here. So let's throw this whole thing under the crusher. It'll make me some dust. Um, and then we'll go ahead and throw this uh, gold dust in here, the oven. It's going to make me a bunch of bars. And it also tells you the total amount of time that it's going to take to make it all. Again, very handy. Helps me to plan accordingly. So, headquarters, I just covered this one. This is where you do your prestiging. Arcade. Um, right now, I have a worker doing this. He's spinning the wheel, but you can, um, you can play this. I think it's like pull tabs. Um, adventure, you, you walk around in a maze. Uh, perfect space. No, I'm not going to play this. But it's basically, um, it's basically Galaga. Um, laboratory. Uh, this is basically a whole bunch of little mini games in one. Um, like here, Universal. You gotta move arrows and dots and whatnot, cause you're trying to get your G's as high or as low as possible, but not both. And you have to arrange arrows in such a way, but I'm not gonna go into all these mini mini games. But this is probably the one that matters the most universal. It's probably the best element in the entire game. So. You know, and there's this. Exotic gems. Uh, probably the rarest gem in the entire game. It unlocks a lot of... It unlocks a lot of important stuff. But like I said, I... I have no idea what to do here. Some of these uh, games in the laboratory are like that. No idea what the hell you're supposed to do in here. Kind of the same thing here. So it, yeah. But yeah, this is probably one of my, um, but like I said, I don't, the only one I mess with in this laboratory is the universal, because again, best element of the game. Um, shipyard. Pretty self-explanatory, you're just, um, you click one of these however much time you want, like I pick, pick this here, by the time I get up. When this comes back, I'm going to get eight of these, I'm going to get 2,700 of those, and then, um, let me, then you can, um, you can upgrade your stuff. So, yeah, you get more rewards. You can, uh, the weather is a multiplier for your, um, shipment. It can increase or decrease what you get. Weather effects can, uh, reduce the, uh, negativity. Um, sea miles. Yeah, the more shipments you do, the more sea miles you get. You'll unlock various stuff. Resource rewards, so... Upgrade to show that. There is the trading post. Um, it looks kind of obvious, but you can trade. You can trade your own resources. I just have it set to fifty percent on everything. Uh, but cool feature. You can just quick trade it. The goal here is to get crates, which you can go here to buy upgrades, and uh, upgrades multiplied by however many crates you have. Then I'm gonna. Okay, I don't wanna. I don't wanna cherry pick albums right now. I'm just gonna play this one. Not really conducive for this kind of video. Um, yeah, Joy Willow exploring the cave. So, yeah. Definitely not the kind of album I play in this kind of video.
she met on the quiet side. Oh well, but Amy, anyway, I gotta move along. So, so yeah. Anyway, you can upgrade some of your buildings, uh, multiply it by the amount of crates you got. Not real picky. As long as you don't, as long as I'm not getting diddly squat with these trades, I just do it. And uh, yeah, time until new deals. And something else I need to show. Um, like I said earlier, these gems are the rarest in the game, but increase. It'll uh, unlock various buffs. Go on and something like the factory. Um, very, very, very important. Like. I don't want to go too in depth, but uh, the machines, that's these. Uh, it, without that upgrade, let's uh, go over here, machines, let's say tier two. Each one of these machines requires a machine of the previous tier. If not for this, it allows you to pick up machines. If not for that, I would have to make another tier one oven pour. And then, if I want to make a tier three, a tier three oven, it would require a tier two oven. But in order to make a tier two oven, I would also have to make another tier one oven on top of it. So, so like I said, some of these exotic skills, like machine handling, is mandatory to have for uh, doing stuff here in the factory. And then workshop showed that. See all these elements and stuff. Uh, museum. As you're uh, playing the game and you're unlocking various achievements, various milestones, uh, you'll get various rewards. Which, um, I don't have a worker in here right now, but he was, uh, making universal stones for me. But, uh, it all, but again, the more, more milestones you get, the more space you get in your loadout. All of these gems give you various boosts. And then, when you combine three... Of exactly the same tier. Like I just uh, I just filled up the whole inventory. You'll upgrade them. So, yeah. so it uh, auto combines. And then artifacts. If you do uh, very specific things in the game. You'll get various rewards, 25% mining rewards for research artifact, that kind of thing, kind of thing. Reduce conversion rate. I could probably go on the wiki and find the hints on these. Construction firm, you guys saw this at the start of the game. Kind of the same thing. You can queue up buildings. Or, well. Statue of Cubos. Um, just. Ba they're basic mini games. I don't really want to go into it here, but you can. So, but again, I don't, I've already gone over long on this video, so, but you kind of get the idea. And then town perks. Um, once you've, um, once you've completely met, oh, I forgot about this. Anyway, 
But once you've completely maxed out, if I can find it. Yeah. But once you've completely maxed out all your buildings, uh, eventually you'll be able to unlock town perks, and this is where you'll be spending the rest of your skill points. So, I got, I currently have four of them, so let's go, oh, let's spend it there. Uh, workers, I kind of touched on this. They, um, they automate some things in your, uh, in your buildings. And I can almost unlock another one. Uh, town assets, again. I don't mess with this part of the game. You can just... Okay. Um, same thing, I touched on this earlier. I don't care for it, stats. Everything you've always wanted to know about your name, about your tower and stuff, your town. Yeah. And then here, one of few games that I can think of where I actually do not want, I do not want to do microtransactions. The game is too fun without them. But yeah, you can buy global boost. Um, uh, island skins, hell, I don't even know where you are. Yeah, I, like I said, this is one of the few games where I actually do not want to where I actually do not want microtransactions. The game wouldn't be wouldn't be as much fun without them. So. <sighs> okay, so <laughs> pretty exhaustive. Like I said, I wasn't expecting to be on, be on this long. It was just meant to be a quick tutorial, but it didn't really happen that way. I'll I'll probably have to start adding timestamps or something to make this uh, make this video a little more digestible. So. But otherwise, hey, thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate that, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.